everyone welcome back to my channel today I will be making this short little jacket or a cropped jacket for a little girl this is a size for uh, five to six years so this is the biggest one on my chart for the sizes as you can see I have used uh, this is lion brand yarn and it is self striping and it looks really nice and colorful uh, it is not very difficult to make. Probably the most difficult part for you uh, for you might be the uh, ribbing right here, which is with slip stitches. Other than that, it is really easy going and a really quick project to make. So just like that. And I have another one to show you. This is a size four to five years. Just a simple one color. Looks really cute. I might have to put a little flower or perhaps to embroider it a little bit to make it a little bit more fancy than that. Uh, other than that, it is exactly the same, just a smaller size. I have made different sizes. I have made smaller sizes before. I just do not have those little jackets with me anymore. But if you got interested in uh, making one of these yourself, let's go have a look of what we are going to need and we can make one of them. For this project we are going to need 5 stitch markers, scissors, a measuring tape in centimeters because my chart is in centimeters so it will be much easier for you to follow me with that, a needle to hide the tails, a hook, uh, I will be using a 4 millimeter hook that matches my yarn weight. My yarn is DK weight, double knit or light weight yarn. So any kind of yarn that you want in lightweight will be absolutely uh, fine. So I have for my main color, I have this uh, Hayfield Bonus DK, uh, 100 grams. Uh, and uh, well, this is the color that I'm not even going to try and uh, say. But this is the color. This is sort of a really light blush pink-ish, something like that. And for the edging, I have this really bright uh, pink. Uh, so again, double knit, uh, the same weight, different brands, it does not matter, whatever you have, you can use. How much yarn you're going to need. Okay, so I will be making a size 18 to 24 months, so 100 grams of the main color and a, uh, I have a 50 gram uh, skin for the edging around, it will be enough, so anything under that or for up to 3 years, 100 grams of main color and a little bit for the edging is going to be enough. Now over three years, so three to four, four to five or five to six years, you're going to need about 150 to 200 grams. So you, you might as well get another skin of the same color. Uh, I did make this, um, let me show you for a second. This is a size for three to four years and I have made it all. Uh, this is how much I needed to finish off. So this was all made with 100 grams. I just needed a tiny little bit to finish this off. Now again, you might have different yarn, you might have different hand, you might need a little bit more than that. Um, I'm just saying that for three to four years, 100 grams for the main color was not enough for me. Everything under that, 100 grams should be enough. Now one more thing that I'm going to mention, as you can see, I do not have any buttons right here and I'm not planning to have any. Now if you want to put buttons in it is absolutely fine. You can just make your buttonholes in between um, these uh, slip stitch rows but have in mind that once you put them onto each other it becomes really thick right here. That is why I choose to do no, uh, no uh, buttons. It is just going to be a little sort of a open jacket. If you want to put something on to close it over, what I can suggest is get yourself these, uh, well not exactly these ones, whatever you, you can, uh, some sort of a buckle. So these are tiny little ones that buckle up like this and you can just sew it on wherever you want them to be or even perhaps a zipper and sew it underneath like that so completely up to you what you want to do I'm just gonna leave it like this a little open in the front uh, okay so one more thing excuse me uh, that I have not mentioned is 
the chart. Okay, so this is my chart that I use. So this is the size that I will be making, 18 to 24 months. You just choose uh, the size that you make and you follow these measurements. You'll, If you are going to make a bigger size than me, your measurements will be bigger. So you are going to have to adjust or make more rows than me. Other than that, this will fit. What we're going to need from this chart is the chest finished. So for me, it will be 58 centimeters. Yoke right here. Uh, sleeve length and just to check upper sleeve. So this one right here. Again, I will show it once we need it. And I'm going to have a picture of this on my Facebook page if you want to have a better look. For now, this is it and we can get started on this little jacket. Okay, so to start, grab your main color. So I have my here, make a slip knot. Have your hook and your measuring tape nearby. So first of all, we are going to uh, have a look right here, how long our starting chain should be. So this is this. Up for your age, so you can see 12 to 18 months, 18 to uh, 24 months, 2 to 3 years, 3, 4, 4, 5, or 5, 6. And this is, next to it, is the length of our starting chain. So for me, for this age, I need to start with a starting chain about 45 centimeters long, or as close to this as I can get. So remember this, and let's have a look right here. So the, in the middle of each square, you always can see the numbers here, and these are the number of chains. So we're going to chain one of these amounts and we're going to measure which one is the closest to this length that we need. Now, if you're making bigger size, obviously your starting chain should be a little bit longer than mine. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to start with chaining 61 and then I'm going to measure if that is close to my 45 centimeters that I need. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I will continue until I have 61 chains. And so I have chained 61 and now I'm going to measure if this is enough for my 45 centimeters in length. I'm going to put the very first uh, chain to the beginning of my measuring tape like this. I'm going to give it a tiny little pull. And as you can see, I'm at about 38 centimeters. I need to be uh, much closer to 45 than this. So this is too short for me. I'm going to go for 70 chains. Okay, so 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70 chains. Again, a measure. And if I give it a tiny little pull, just to stretch it out a little, I end up at about look, 44, 45 centimeters, which is absolutely fine. So this is the one that I am going to use. If you feel that you need to stretch it really much to get to your measurement, it is probably too short. Uh, you should go for the bigger or for more chains than that, but uh, I just feel like even if I put just put the hook down, I'm at about 44, 45, so very, very close to where I need to be right here. So this is how you figure out which one of these number of chains you need to be for your starting chain. I have 70. I'm gonna take this away. And now we're going to start like that. So whatever number you have, the next row is the same for everybody. You are going to skip the very first chain, go into the second one and make a single crochet and count. So that is one, go into the next one, two, three, four, five and keep going making one single crochet into each chain and count your single crochets now at the end you should have one less single crochet than the number right here so if i had 70 chains i'm gonna have 69 single crochets so keep going count and i'm gonna see you at the end of this row 
And so I have finished and I do have 69 single crochets, one less than this number in the middle right here. Okay, now we are going to start with the uh, row one of our uh, V stitch. Now beginning is the same for everybody. Each row is going to start with chaining two. So one and two. Grab your four stitch markers and put them closer to you. Like right here. Okay, so chain two and turn. Now for the very beginning, you are going to skip that stitch, the very, very first one that is under the chain two. Technically, the chain two <clears throat> is coming out of this stitch. So you skip that, you skip the next one, and then you're gonna start making your V stitches. So it looks like you're skipping two stitches in the very beginning. So in the third one, you make a double crochet chain one and a double crochet back into the same stitch and this is your first V stitch then you're gonna skip two stitches one two and make another V stitch So double crochet, chain one double crochet, all in the same stitch. Now you're going to have a look at this number right here. So you look under uh, this, whichever one you got, you look underneath right here. What number do you have? I have number three because this is the chart that I'm using. You might have two, you might have four, you look up yours. So free for me. That means I need to have three V stitches before my first corner. I have one, two. I need another one. So I'm gonna again, I skip two stitches and I make a V stitch. Like this. So for me, this part is done. If you need to have four, you skip two stitches and make your fourth V stitch. Next up is a corner. Now before each corner we do in this row we are only going to skip one stitch and after we do the V stitch for the corner again we're gonna only skip one stitch after that. So in between normal V stitches you skip two before and after the corner you only skip one. Just something uh, for you to know so you don't get confused. So this is before my first corner. I skip one stitch into the second one. I make a V stitch. Double crochet, chain one and double crochet. Now you're gonna take a stitch marker and mark that chain one space. Just like that. Next, we have this part right here and I have number four. So that means I'm going to have four V stitches over my shoulder or the sleeve. Again, look up whichever one that you are making. You might have different numbers. I have four. So to start uh, the V stitches on the sleeve, again, after the corner, you're gonna skip one stitch. Into the second one, you make your first V stitch. And then you're going to start skipping two stitches until you have uh, the number of V stitches required here. So after that, skip two, make a V stitch into the third stitch. Again, skip two, one, two into the third stitch, make your V stitch. Again, one, two into the third one, make your V stitch. At this point, I have four V stitches after my last corner. So one, two, three, four. I'm ready to do my, <clears throat> excuse me, second corner. Again, you might have more than me, so you just follow these numbers. I am done my second corner. Before the corner, you only skip one stitch, and then into the second one, you make a corner V stitch. Grab a stitch marker and mark that chain one space. Then we are on to the back of the neck or the back of this little jacket. So I have seven, number seven right here. So that means I'm gonna have seven V stitches going on the back. After the corner, you only skip one stitch 
and then do make your V stitch this is one and then you start skipping two stitches again one two into the third one V stitch skip two into the third one V stitch skip two into the third one V stitch and keep going until you have this number of V stitches that is up on the top of the chart so I'll come back when I have seven now I'm finished with the back I have my third corner V stitch again just before the corner I have a little knot okay oops just before the corner again you only skip one stitch into the second you make the corner V stitch mark that with a stitch marker the chain one space and then you're on to the other side uh, of the sleeve so you have one sleeve here and then the other one so the same number to start after the corner you only skip one stitch and do your first V stitch after that so this is one skip two stitches into the third one two skip two stitches this is three skip two stitches and this is four for me have a good look do you need to make more depending on the chart that you are using so I have four my very last corner right here skip one stitch before the corner V stitch make your corner V stitch mark that chain one space after that you skip one stitch make a V stitch into the second one after the corner <clears throat> and you keep going so skip two stitches V stitch skip two stitches and a V stitch now if you look at the chart this is how many V stitches you should have at the end so for me one two and three right here you might have two <coughs> excuse me or you might have four at the end you should have two stitches left one and two you're gonna skip the skip the second last stitch go into the very very last one and make a double crochet just like that I'm gonna take this away again this is going to be on my uh, Facebook if somebody needs to have a better look I'm gonna take that away and let's just have a look so for those who got a little confused of uh, where how many stitches you skip so just before each V stitch that is marked with a stitch marker you have skipped one stitch and one stitch just before this one stitch and one after everywhere in between all the other V stitches in the middle in between the stitch markers you skip two stitches two 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 and this one has one one and then two 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 one and hopefully that makes sense okay at this point we can start on our repeat rows so this is going to be the repeat row uh, one and just remember okay again every row starts uh, with chaining two so one and two and turn you're gonna find the first V stitch from your previous row which is right here and in the chain one space you're going to make another V stitch double crochet chain one and double crochet next V stitch chain one space make a V stitch in there like this and next chain one space make a V stitch and you keep going until you run out of 
chain one spaces well, because my next one has a stitch marker in it that means we make a corner and then you stop so as you can see I had three in the previous row I have three in this row next now how to do the corners in the repeat row one we are not going to make a corner in the chain one space where we have the stitch marker the first V stitch that we make is in the top stitch of this double crochet we have double crochet here and double crochet there first one we make in the stitch of the first double crochet so yarn over go in top of this double crochet and make a V stitch next you are gonna just jump over that chain one space where the stitch marker is you're gonna find the stitch from the second double crochet which is right here a little to the left of it and you're going to make another V stitch in there so double crochet chain one and double crochet once you do that you're gonna take your stitch marker out and you will place it in between these two V stitches not into any of the stitch just right in between them so this is have a look this is how your corners should look like in the first repeat row so you make your V stitches on top of these double crochets then you continue on making a V stitch into each chain one space until you come to your next stitch marker So my next chain one space is marked so I'm gonna do exactly the same again all corners in this row look the same once you come to the stitch marker you make a V stitch on top of this double crochet right here double crochet chain one double crochet so you can see right here skip over that chain one space and make a V stitch in top of this double crochet take stitch marker out and place it in between these two V stitches like that and then continue on with one V stitch into each chain one space okay so again next V stitch is marked or the chain one space is marked so do exactly the same on the top of that double crochet make a V stitch skip over that chain one space and in the top of the next double crochet make a V stitch put your stitch marker in between these two and continue on with a V stitch into each chain one space and I'm gonna leave the last corner uh, up to you so exactly the same once you hit that one and I'm gonna see you at the end of this row to finish this row you will make a double crochet in the second chain so this is chain one and chain two that we did in the beginning of the previous row so in the top chain you're gonna make a double crochet okay so uh, repeat row two you are going to start with chaining two as always and you will turn you will keep making a V stitch into each chain one space so 
all the way to where your first stitch marker is. So this is my stitch marker. I have one more chain one space before it. I'm going to make a V stitch. And now in this row, in the repeat row two, you will have a V stitch right where your stitch marker is, right in there. So just, this is not a chain one space, this was a space in between two V stitches. And you just put a V stitch in there, like this, stitch marker out, mark that chain one space. And keep going with a V stitch into each chain one space. Starting from the next one and continue again until you get to a stitch marker. So I have, you can see I have one more chain space here, make a V-stitch and there exactly where the marker is, I make a V-stitch. This is my corner V-stitch. Take that out, mark your chain one space. And continue on again, V-stitch into each chain one space. Again, my stitch marker, my last chain one space before it. Then exactly where the stitch marker is placed, I'm gonna go in there and make a corner V stitch. Take that out, mark my chain one space and continue on uh, as we did before and I'm gonna leave you to do the last corner right here by yourself so it's exactly like you did here where the stitch marker is you get to make a V stitch all other chain one spaces get a V stitch and I'm gonna see you right here to finish this row we're gonna make a double crochet into the second chain so chain one and chain two into the top or the second chain make a double crochet and these are the two rows that we will be um, repeating all the time so I'm just going to remind you uh, the repeat row one so I'm gonna get to the corner and show you remind you of the corners row starts with chaining two turn and V stitches in the chain one space. You get to your stitch marker and as it is the repeat row one you will be making your V stitches in top of this double crochet right here and in top of this double crochet right there. So first double crochet and you make a V stitch. 
you skip over the chain one space and in top of the other double crochet you make a v-stitch I'm gonna take your marker out and place it in between those two v-stitches right in between and then you continue on with a v-stitch into each chain one space once you get to the corner again you're gonna do exactly the same so in this corner you're gonna have a v-stitch on top of this double crochet and a v-stitch in uh, on top of this one and you continue on until you finish this row finishing up repeat row one into the second chain double crochet now again you're gonna start repeat row two chain two and turn uh, v-stitch into each chain one space until you get to the stitch marker again this is just a reminder if you need to watch this again you can just go back uh, a few minutes and see how I did this repeat row two So every chain one space, this is my last one, chain one space, <coughs> and then in the repeat row two, exactly where your stitch marker is, so in between these two v-stitches from the previous row, you make a v-stitch, take your stitch marker out, mark your chain one space and continue on with a v-stitch in each chain one space until you get to your next stitch marker and you will be repeating these two rows and your uh, yoke will be growing it will be getting bigger longer and wider in every way now for those who are not so used to uh, crochet I will tell you one thing because I always get questions yes you're gonna have more and more V stitches every second row that is normal that is because we are increasing it and it is getting bigger and bigger so this is what it looks like uh, at the moment now we need to keep going until it is long enough for us to uh, connect uh, so I will quickly do <clears throat> uh, do the rest until I'm ready to connect so I can show you exactly what and where to measure for now just keep repeating these two rows and I will see you in a bit and my yoke is finished I am ready to connect and now this is the first measurement that we need to look up so yoke right here look up to the size that you are making so I'm making 18 to 24 months and the yoke should be 14 centimeters long now grab your measuring tape and measure from the top of that corner so you can see this is the line where the stitch marker is so there's a little kind of a corner there to the stitch marker all the way down as you can see I am at 13 centimeters in length uh, on the my chart it says 14 centimeters now you can be one and a half uh, centimeter short or less because right here in the next row when we are co connecting we're gonna have a double crochet which is going to extend this line for another centimeter or centimeter and a half so do not worry you can have less you can have a maybe a half centimeter missing it does not matter anything from one and a half to a half centimeter missing for the yoke length right here is absolutely fine because we're gonna make it up with a double crochet in the next row so this is high enough for me the next thing that I want to have a look at is right here so this is going to be a half of our chest measurement that we're going to measure I'm quite positive that we should be really really close or even over our chest measurement at this point so look up chest finished right here for the size that you're making 18 to 24 months for me 
58 centimeters now 58 centimeters for me is all the way around as I'm going to measure only the back part the half I need to divide this number into two and I'm going to have 29 centimeters so again if you're doing this size you divide that into two you have 30 31 32 33 centimeters and so on so only a half of this so I'm gonna measure for 29 centimeters and like I said I really should be either very very close or even over that measurement so I'm gonna measure all the way around from one stitch marker to the other and as you can see I am at about 28 and a little bit centimeter so I'm really if I'm missing anything at all I'm missing about a half of a centimeter which means uh, I'm only going to put one chain underneath each armhole now if you're missing uh, more than one centimeter okay so if you're missing one centimeter is fine you still do chain one under underneath each armhole if you're missing more than one let's say if you're missing two you're going to chain four underneath so you're just gonna extend this measurement a tiny little bit so four here and four over there okay so connecting now you're gonna chain two uh, again, uh, I forgot to mention, it does not matter what which repeat row you're on, you're just going to follow your stitches. So, chain 2, start making your V stitches until you come to your stitch marker. <coughs> Okay, so use all your chain one spaces to get to that stitch marker. As many as you have, it does not matter. And then, wherever your stitch marker is, it could be in the chain one space or it could be like me, in between two V stitches. Exactly where your stitch marker is, you're going to make a double crochet. So exactly there. Now, one more thing that we have to do before uh, we start connecting, you should have an extra stitch marker left and uh, exactly the way that you're crocheting, when you put your uh, work down, just put a stitch marker absolutely anywhere. This is just, uh, it will be easy, it will come in handy when we are going to do the sleeves, uh, just to make sure that we know which uh, side of the work we're on. So stitch marker absolutely anywhere just so it stands out so that comes in handy, okay? So put that in. Next, once you make your double crochet, before you start chaining, you're gonna take that stitch marker out wherever it is, it does not matter, and then you're going to replace it into the next chain one space above it. So this is where my stitch marker was, where the double crochet is. Find the next chain one space above it and put your st stitch marker in there. So right here. Okay. So we have the double crochet here. Then we're going to chain. So I am only going to chain one because I'm very close to that chest measurement. If you need to chain four to extend that, just make four chains. Next. We're going to find our next stitch marker. Going to yarn over and exactly where the stitch marker is, you're going to make a double crochet. So I have a double crochet and one double crochet. You might have four chains in between these double crochets. Now again, I'm going to take this stitch marker out where it is standing right here. And I'm going to place it in the chain one space above. So this is going to be the sleeve. So just above that double crochet. So just right above it into the next one. 
and then you're going to continue making a V stitch into each chain one space in the back of your little jacket so keep making those V stitches until you come to your next stitch marker okay so I have crocheted my way to the next stitch marker so as you can see one sleeve is connected now we're gonna do the, exactly the same on the other side <clears throat> so you're gonna make a double crochet exactly where the stitch marker is now you're going to move that stitch marker to the next chain one space above it so my stitch marker was here this is my next chain one space above. I'm gonna mark that. That will come in handy when we are doing the sleeves um, as well. Next, we are going to chain whatever we have to chain, exactly the same as we did on the other sleeve. So I am going to chain one. I am going to find my next stitch marker. So we're gonna skip all that go exactly where the stitch marker is and make a double crochet again take that stitch marker out and move it above so towards the sleeve so this is the sleeve move it into the next chain one space that you can see above that double crochet like that and continue on to finish this row with V stitches with one V stitch into each chain one space. So now we have our yoke connected and we only have four more rows left because this is a short little jacket. If you want to make it longer, you can make it longer. Just have in mind that you might need more uh, yarn to finish uh, to finish this little jacket. Okay, so I'm going to quickly finish this and again each row starts and finish exactly the same so let's have a quick look of how this looks like Let me get a little bit out like this so you see I have my stitch marker here which is um, showing which side I'm on and this is my connection now you can check if you want you can check uh, that your sleeves um, are wide enough so this is the upper sleeve right here so for the age that I'm making let me see so 18 to 24 months about 10 and a half centimeters wide you grab your measuring tape and just measure from the inside all the way down to where that double crochet is so I am at about 11 centimeters wide which is absolutely perfect do not worry if it is uh, if you have more space than on my chart uh, absolutely no problem at all we're gonna have this nice little um, edging on the sleeve that is going to take it in real real nice up here just to make sure that it is wide enough okay so let me quickly now get to the chain space right here so you just continue your pattern until you get to these chains right here I am at my chain space so as you can see I have used up every chain one space from the V stitches and so once you get right here under the armhole if you have chain one just like me right here you're going to yarn over and make a V stitch into that chain one but you don't just go under it you want to go into that chain because we are going to connect right here to do to start the sleeve again so you so you want to have a little strand left there so you make a V stitch in there and then you find the next chain one space so remember this is a double crochet and this is your v-stitch and you keep making your v-stitches now if you have made four chains right here I'm just gonna do a little drawing so you're gonna have so if you're crocheting like this what I'm looking so this is a double crochet and then you have one two three 
four chains and then a double crochet so this is I mean looking like this this double crochet is right here and then four chains what you're going to do is you're going to make a v-stitch into the first of these four chains you're gonna skip two chains and make another v-stitch right here and then after that double crochet you're gonna look for the next chain one space from the previous row and make your v-stitch again you just end up doing two v-stitches in the ch chain if you have four chains as I had double crochet chain one double crochet I did made a v-stitch right here so hopefully that makes sense uh, okay so then you continue on until you get to your other armhole where I'm going to see you again so I'm just gonna crochet all the way around to here under your next armhole you're gonna do exactly the same I have one chain in between these two double crochets so I make a v-stitch into that chain and then continue on making v-stitches into every chain one space until the end of this row if you had four chains <coughs> you do again you do exactly like I have shown right here so I'm gonna quickly finish this row uh, so all we have to do uh, for this for the length of the of this little jacket is to make another three rows of v-stitches so no more corners no more thinking just a v-stitch in every chain one space for the next three rows you finish and start each row exactly the same so as you can see like this so chain two turn and a v-stitch into each chain one space and you just keep going so like I said you want to have so if you look like this this is one row so you want to have four v-stitches underneath your armhole so one two three and four and I'm gonna see you at the end of the fourth row and so I have finished the main uh, part of the body of this little jacket as you can see if you look underneath the armhole I have one two three four rows left uh, and I am now going to cut my yarn so wherever you finish you want to chain one and cut your yarn and we are done with this now the next thing that we are going to do are the sleeves so I'm going to turn off real quick make one sleeve just because it's easier for me to explain things once I have something to show you so I'm gonna see you in a blink of an eye I have finished one of my sleeves so that this is all straight no uh, decreasing or anything just a straight nice sleeve and then we leave the last four centimeters for this little uh, edging here made out of slip stitches which is a bit more difficult but I will show it all uh, nice and slowly okay so talking about the length of the sleeve first of all sleeve length and according to the age that you're making it for so I have 21 centimeters in total sleeve length now this measures from the end of the sleeve to the armhole so right there so as you can see I have 21 now if you 
pull it it will be a little bit longer but uh, try not to pull it yet it will stretch a little bit after you start putting it on the child but for now just leave it uh, as it is okay without stretching when you measure um, one thing that we have to have in mind whatever is written right here okay so when you will be making the sleeve we will be starting here so you keep making that and then you just leave last four centimeters from the full length of the sleeve to do this so as you can see right here four centimeters to leave for the end of the sleeve so I made uh, so if 21 was my full length I made 17 centimeters in these stitches and then the last four I made uh, in slip stitches and in total it is 21 centimeters okay uh, hopefully that makes sense now on to the sleeve. So the very first thing that you want to do is before uh, you start the sleeve is you are going to find that stitch marker that we have put in. So it has to be facing outside. Okay, so it's uh, like this. Then you're gonna find your sleeve. Now remember we have these uh, two markers there. You are going to get your yarn, make a slip knot. You're gonna find the one chain underneath right here on the very, very bottom of the sleeve or very armhole. Or if you have four, it does not matter. You just uh, uh, connect at the very middle of those four chains, just anywhere at the very, very middle of that uh, place right here. So I have chain one. I'm gonna put in my hook Pull that out and chain two one and two now the rest is exactly the same for everybody We are gonna go on the outside of the sleeve just because this is our marker here So we need to go on the outside of the sleeve. So your chain two you're gonna turn sideways. First of all, you're going to find that double crochet right here that we have connected to uh, our uh, yoke with and you're gonna make one V-stitch there. Just under that double crochet. Make, so, V-stitch. Next, this is uh, where why we put the markers in. It will be easier for us to find the very first chain one space and you just go wherever your marker is and make a v-stitch and then you're going to continue with a v-stitch into each chain one space all the way around And here I come to my next stitch marker, the second one. I am going to make a V-stitch in there, in that chain one space where the marker is. Then you get to skip whatever is there and make a V-stitch right into the double crochet that we have connected it to. The double crochet, chain one double crochet now at this point we are done so chain one and chain two that we did in the very beginning into the second or the top chain we make a slip stitch chain two and turn now we will be 
going around the sleeve from the inside of it. So you, after chaining two, you are going to straight away look for that chain one space or the v-stitch, the first v-stitch from the previous row, and just make a v-stitch. And continue on with one v-stitch in each chain one space all the way around until you get to the end of this row. Just like this and continue. I'm going to see you right here. Once you have used up all your chain one spaces and you're at the end of this row, you're going to again find the second chain, chain one and chain two and slip stitch. And this is all there is uh, to the sleeve. We will continue making these two rows. Now uh, I'll just remind you how to start. So you're going to chain two and you're going to turn every time. Okay, so chain two, turn, and then again look for the first chain one space and make your v-stitch and then keep making them until you get to the end of this row. Now, uh, I am not going to do any decreasing because my sleeve is not too wide, but just in case if somebody thinks that their sleeve is a little wide and they would like to uh, make it uh, just... Um, you know, to do a little bit of decreasing so it wouldn't be so wide. Uh, meet me at the end of this row and I will show you how you can do one decrease. Okay, so uh, if you want to do a decrease, you want to get to the end of any of the rows, okay? Just uh, leave one V-stitch to do the decrease. Okay, as you can see right here, chain one space. I would normally do a v-stitch if you don't want to do a decrease. If you want, you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna yarn over and make one double crochet in that chain one sp uh, space. That is all there is. Then you're gonna find the chain two and slip stitch. So as you can see, now you have only one double crochet left instead of double crochet, chain one double crochet, but we still, we still need uh, to get rid of that double crochet. So then when you start the next row, you're going to chain two, you're going to turn, you're going to yarn over, go into that double crochet, into the stitch of that double crochet, pull out your yarn, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops. You're going to stop there, go into the chain one space from the next v-stitch catch your yarn pull it out you have four loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and this is now you have only one stitch left up there instead of the two double crochets that we did there so uh, that means that this double crochet does not exist anymore after that you're gonna chain one and make a double crochet into chain one space. So if you look carefully, you have chain two there, this double crochet disappears and you just have a v-stitch. So this v-stitch does not exist anymore. It's just gone. So the next time you just um, connect right here with a slip stitch and you end up with one less v-stitch. Now as I said, <clears throat> I do not need to do a, a, a decrease. My sleeve is not that wide. So I will just continue making V-stitches until I get to the length of, a, of my sleeve. Like I said, when I am four centimeters short to my full sleeve length. So for now, continue on and I will see when we have the length done. The main part of the sleeve is done. I, it measures at the moment about 17, 17 and a half centimeters. The next four centimeters will be my ribbing around the sleeve. Okay, 
so when you finish the row that uh, gives you all full length, you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. Now leave a slightly longer tail. Uh, there will be a, a reason for that once we finish uh, the ribbing. Then you are going to get the color for the ribbing. So I have this bright pink. Again, I'm gonna leave a slightly longer tail and make a slip knot. I'm gonna find where that knot is where you have just finished and connect your new color right behind that knot. Chain one. Now we are going to crochet uh, over one, uh, each tail for about two or three V stitches, okay? So you chained one, you're gonna find the next stitch and make a single crochet. So that is one single crochet. Then I have a chain one space. This is two single crochets. Next stitch, three, next stitch, four, uh, chain one space, five. The next stitch, the stitch number six, you're gonna completely skip. Go into the, so skip that one, go into the next one, one, two, three, four, five, stitch number six, you're gonna skip. Now I have crocheted enough over this tail, so I'm just gonna leave it here. So I skip that, go into the next one, and again, one, two, three, four, five, skip number six. One, two, three, four, five, skip number six. One, two, three, four, five, skip number six. One, two, three, four, Five. I'm gonna skip number six, but first, as I'm getting close to the end, I'm just gonna pick this pink tail and I'm just gonna put it over. So I'm gonna skip that. One, two, three, four, five, and I end up skipping the very last stitch. Uh, it is no problem if you don't get to skip here, or you get to skip here. Uh, as many skips as you can make in there, it's absolutely fine. Uh, do not worry about that. So I uh, get to skip the very last one. Then you have a chain one here, you're gonna skip and slip stitch into the very, very first stitch. Now this is where we're going to start the ribbing. If you're not very used to making uh, slip stitch ribbings, you're gonna have to watch carefully, okay? You might even uh, uh, try to take a marker that might be a little bit easier. I'll show the first uh, the first time the ribbing without it and then I'll show you how you can use it to make it easier for you if you're not used to this. So you're gonna chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If at any point you find that this is not enough length for you, you can always add more chains, or if this is too long for you, you can uh, make uh, less chains. This is completely up to you. I just choose seven chains to start with. I'm gonna have six slip stitches into that. So this is going to be my four centimeters. Now you're gonna skip the very, very first uh, chain go into the second one and make a slip stitch. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six slip stitches. Then you're gonna skip a stitch, go into the next one, and you're gonna make a slip stitch. We are just connecting it to the sleeve. Now you're going to start the next row from this slip stitch into the back loop. So you're gonna turn your work sideways, put your working yarn in front like this, 
So you get to skip that slip stitch that we just did. So you skip the very first one and find the next one. Go into the back loop of that slip stitch, only one loop. So each slip stitch is going to have the front loop and the back loop. So you only catch the second loop. Go into the back loop and make a slip stitch. So this is one into the back loop, two into the back, back loop, three, four, five, and six. Now you're going to chain one, chain one, and turn. You're going to skip that chain one and into the back loop of the next stitch you're going to start slip stitching again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now I'm going to show you if you find it difficult to find the very first stitch after you slip stitch uh, the ribbing to the sleeve. You're going to get your stitch marker and you're going to mark that very last stitch, not the loop that is on the hook, but the very last slip stitch. Like this. Again, you're gonna skip one stitch, go into the second one, make a slip stitch, and turn. Put your yarn in front, and now you have that your very very first stitch marked so this is that and into the back loop you start making so this is one we can take that out two three four five six chain one and turn skip that chain one into the back loop one two three four, five, and six. Again, if you need to, mark your last stitch. You're going to skip one stitch and connect into the second one. And turn, yarn in front. You have the first stitch marked, so into the back loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, chain one, skip, one, two, three, four, five, and six. If you need, again, you can mark that stitch. Uh, I do not need that. You skip one stitch at the bottom of the sleeve, go into the next one, slip stitch, and you keep going into the back loops only. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chain one, skip the chain into the back loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Skip a stitch and connect it. Turn. And this is all we are going to do for the ribbing of the sleeve. So for now you will just keep going until you will get to the end of the sleeve or until you will crochet all the way around with a ribbing. So keep going and I'm gonna see you right here somewhere. Now once you have one stitch or none stitches left in here, this is where we're going to finish. So I have one stitch left right here and the next one is a slip stitch from the chains. So I'm just gonna skip, skip over that and go in into that slip stitch where the chains are and I will slip stitch to finish. If you had two more chains left in there, you just uh, do another row up and down. So you either finish when you have one chain left or none, uh, sorry, uh, one stitch or no stitches at all. 
So once you slip stitch, you are going to cut your yarn, leave a slightly longer tail because we are going to uh, sew it together with, and just pull that out. Grab your needle, and we are going to sew together. So you're gonna uh, sew the side where the leftover chains are or the side of the chains that we have not used from starting and then on the other side so this is the from the very first chain and I'm gonna catch the front loop only the first loop from the stitch that I have just finished with so then again the next chain and the next stitch only the front loop next chain and the front loop chain front loop and my very last one so at the very end you want to go in one more time and keep that loop don't pull it out completely then you go into the loop and make a knot and that is it I'm just gonna uh, put that tail through the seam that I have just made to hide it and cut that off and this is how my sleeve looks like now those tails that I have left slightly longer so this is what we can do we can take a little bit of this bulkiness out so if you now that uh, pull the tail that you have crocheted over you can see how this bulkiness right here disappears a little bit just give it a little pull and the same on the other side if you pull on that you just take a little bit of that bulkiness away from the bottom you don't have to do that if you don't want to but it does seem to look slightly nicer and I'm just gonna hide those tails And now you go on and do exactly the same with the other sleeve. After that, we are going to start on the neckline. To start the neckline, we are going to start at the uh, on the top corner under our left hand so right here you might have a different row uh, my single crochets are the wrong side here this is the right side it does not matter we just start at this corner I am going to make a slip knot find the very first stitch we are or we are going to use the leftovers uh, from the chains so there will be uh, a little chain over each stitch so this is where we're going uh, to go in with our hook catch that loop to chain one and we are going to start single crochet so one single crochet into each stitch all the way around the neckline so one two three actually I don't even need to count just one single crochet into each stitch then just like that keep going all the way around and I'm gonna meet you right here Once you do that, we're going to do the same as we did on the sleeve, only we are going to have 
free slip stitches of course if you feel that free slip stitches is not enough for you that it is uh, still gonna be very very wide you can do four or five completely up to you but I feel that free slip stitches are enough uh, to close in that neckline okay so uh, start with chaining four one two three four starting from the second chain do your slip stitches one two and three now you're gonna turn again I'm gonna skip the very first stitch or the next one go into the second and make a slip stitch turn and go up into the back loop one two and three chain one and coming back down one two three skip a stitch slip stitch in the next one turn yarn in front into the back loop one two three chain one into the back loop one two three skip one stitch slip stitch to the neckline and this is the way that we are gonna go all the way around the neck continue until you get to the end right here so I'm finishing up the neckline and once you come to the end and you need to slip stitch uh, down uh, to this single crochets right here whenever you have one or two stitches left it does not matter you just slip stitch into the very last stitch so I have two stitches left so I'm just gonna skip one and slip stitch into the very last stitch I'm gonna chain one and cut my yarn and that is it right here for now we are next going to uh, do the bottom of the jacket so turn around so it is upside down like this we're gonna start at this corner right here into the very very first stitch so I have the chain two right here I'm just gonna go into the top of that chain I'm gonna chain one and again just like we did right here with single crochets we're gonna skip stitch number six uh, every time so one two three four five I'm gonna skip number six one two three four five skip number six one two three four five skip number six and keep going like this all the way around and I'm gonna see you on this side right here okay so I've done that I think I got my last skip right here somewhere so you don't want to skip anything really too close to the edge uh, anywhere a little bit off is absolutely fine uh, and single crochets done now we're going to start on the uh, ribbing again but uh, one thing I want to do is grab four stitch markers and we are going to mark out so this 
point right here where your sleeve is you want to mark out six stitches about about this place right here underneath so I'm gonna put perhaps from this one so one two three four five six to this one so I have one two three four stitches in between my stitch markers I'm gonna do the same on the other side I'm in a second I am going to show you what we're gonna do there so again this is the armhole so probably about here one two three four five six right here okay so why he, we have marked right here so we're gonna do a little bit of decreasing to get to get to get let me show you so so that at this part at the side is gonna be slightly tucked in so we're gonna do a little bit of decreasing in there because this is a lot of work to go all the way around which I'm gonna show you in a second again now if you want uh, these this part this ribbing to be a slightly more uh, angle just to be tucked in a little bit more I have uh, let me show you I have it on this one as you can see the angles are uh, slightly bigger tucked in I have marked out 10 stitches on uh, both sides so we do it under underneath our armhole so it would be at the very side of the jacket so if you want this to be tucked in a little bit more you can mark out more stitches underneath both sides okay so to start uh, again, you can choose uh, how long you want this ribbing. I'm just going to do the same length as the sleeve. So I'm going to have six slip stitches. I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Skip the first stitch and start your slip stitches. One, two, three, four, five and six now I'm gonna turn and for the bottom part right here we are not gonna be skipping any stitches at the bottom we will always be slip stitch into the next stitch and turn skip that stitch and make your slip stitches up into the back loop so no skipping when we are connecting the ribbing uh, to the cardigan or to the to the little jacket chain one turn skip the chain one and into the back loop one two three four five and six so when you need to connect it to the cardigan again remember you do not skip a stitch you go into the next one slip stitch and you start the next row into the back loop one two three four five and six chain one skip the chain one one two three four five six and again you slip stitch into this next stitch and you turn straight away now we are not skipping a stitch right here because if we skip that stitch our ribbing at the bottom is going to look like this so it's gonna take in a lot of the length around the bottom so it would be looking a bit like this a bit like at the at the top which is too much that's that is why we do not skip any stitches so keep doing this without skipping until you get to your first stitch marker okay I am at the stitch marker right now so the, uh, I have six stitches that means that I will be skipping a stitch three times so this is my decreasing I'll just skip one stitch go into the next one and slip stitch 
and exactly the same so just three times again if you want to do more absolutely no problem at all completely up to you I just want those very very sides to be slightly tucked in again I'm gonna skip one stitch slip stitch so the only difference is in between those stitch markers you do get to skip a stitch when you are uh, connecting to the bottom of your jacket and my third time again I'm gonna skip one stitch and I will end up in my where my stitch marker is chain one and come down one two three four five six now I do not need these stitch markers anymore I can take them out um, this one too and then after that you again you continue without skipping any stitches so connect into the next and keep going up and down and uh, so you crochet like this we are at the back part of the jacket right now so again all this part you will continue on into each stitch no skipping you get to your stitch markers you get to skip three times or whatever you have left right here and then again you finish off the front without skipping and you can see how it looks like and this part right here where we skipped it already looks like it's um, br bringing this down a little bit just a tiny little bit like I said if you want more you get to skip for uh, more times than me so for now continue on and I will see you right here and here I am finishing the ribbing at the bottom and now once you have one stitch left you just slip stitch into that chain one and cut your yarn like this and you can see my ribbing is done I'm gonna just place it so you can see it so like this now the only thing that we have left uh, to do is to finish the uh, front panels right here so we are going to start uh, with the side under our left hand at the bottom again grab your yarn and you're going to connect into the very very bottom of it so there's a chain one so this is where I'm going to connect into that chain one it's kind of a very last loop I'm gonna chain one and start slip stitching so this is what's left from our chain that we have started so uh, I'm gonna start right next to it so one and what you want to do is you want to count your slip stitches in the first row so you can match the same amount of slip stitches on the other side so I have one two three four five six uh, after that what I'm going to do I'm gonna do two slip stitches in as inside of uh, each row so this is one row I'm gonna do two slip stitches two slip stitches here and keep going all the way up so I have six seven eight <coughs> nine ten 
twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. Thirty-four, and now you're gonna do the same uh, at the side of the pink. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, and thirty-eight. So there we go. I have thirty-eight uh, slip stitches. I'm gonna double check on the way back again, and we will be doing uh, another five or six rows of slip stitches into the back loop only. Uh, it is actually completely up to you uh, how many rows you want to do. I just want to have a nice little front right here. So another five or six, completely up to you, whatever you decide. So chain one, you're going to turn around and starting into the back loops again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and keep going until you get to the bottom of this row. Once you are at the bottom, you are going to chain one and turn. So this is going to be my row three. And again, into the back loop only. I'm gonna do one, two, three four and keep going up so you go up and again you chain one turn around and you crochet into the back loop now I guess that this is uh, this is row four so I have another at least two or three rows to go uh, like I said completely up to you to decide I'm just gonna crochet and see how uh, I like it now I'm gonna show what to do if you have um, uh, if you want to make buttonholes, grab a few stitch markers and I will see you in uh, two seconds. Okay, so if you want the buttonholes, you're gonna mark the places where you want the buttons to be or as many as you want, as far apart as you want them as well. And then you're going to chain one, slip stitch all the way down to the marker. So my marker is in the next stitch there. Then you're gonna chain two or three, whatever, uh, depending on the size of your button you're going to skip two stitches and then in the third stitch you make a slip stitch and you keep going making slip stitches in the back loop until you get to your next uh, stitch marker and as you can see you can have a buttonhole just like that so now i'm just going to uh, i'm just going to imagine that i went down and are coming back up and how to cover this how to go over this again so let's say I'm coming back again into the back loops and just where the chains start so these are the two chains that I did I'm just gonna go under and make two 
slip stitches and then again on the way down if you if you have more rows you, you just go into the back loops and that way you can do your buttonholes like I said I'm not gonna have the buttonholes so I will just continue on for another few rows to finish this side so I'm gonna see you when I'm done So I have finished, I did six rows in total, I am happy with it, I do not want it to be any wider than this. And at the end, I just chain one and cut my yarn. Now we just have to do the same on the other side, where we are going to start at the top of the neckline. Make a slip knot. Connect at the very, very top. I'm gonna chain one and I'm going to start uh, making slip stitches again. I am gonna count them. So, one, two, three, I think I want to go here, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, <clears throat> twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Now I need thirty-eight. So 31, 32, 33, and then I start into the back loop, 34, 35, 36, 37, and I need one more, but I have two stitches left, so I'm just going to uh, change that up a little bit. I'm going to skip this part, I'm going to go here and I should have the correct amount at the end of this row which I'm going to check on the second row so I should have 38 slip stitches but I have made the chain one right here which I'm going to crochet in so I'm gonna have 39 in the next row so chain one and again into the back loop And you keep going until you have the same amount of rows like you had in the other side. So I'm going to uh, keep doing this until I have six rows in total and then we will be finished. And here we go. I am finished. I'm just going to chain one and cut my yarn. The only thing I have left to do is to hide those tails. So I have crocheted over most of my tails, so I kind of just give it one more, um, one more little stitch just to make sure it doesn't come out. This one right here.
I, I might just show you how I hide these uh, corner ones so I just like to <clears throat> go into the f in, into the top with my needle and then onto the inside so like this and I just pull and watch that it looks like a nice little corner so right here I'm happy with this and I'm just gonna go in between those slip stitches my yarn is not very slippery so I'm not too worried uh, it really should not come undone and I'll just show you one more and you can hide the rest yourself and keep going until you hide all of your tails and my little jacket is done I have all my tails hidden it is very simple yet um, very cute it looks like this so the back is like that well hopefully it worked out for you as well so I'm very happy with it. I will wish you all the best of luck and I will say goodbye to you and I will see you in the next one. Bye!